Hello everyone and welcome to the webinar what is product management so before we address the elephant in the room product management let me introduce myself first i'm shilpi and i'm a product manager with intercom previously i've worked with startups like mohalla tech just share chat and moj and vmock in india I also had a brief stint with uh, a management consulting, working as an associate consultant. Uh, you can find me on Twitter and on my website, amshilpi. dot com. Uh, if you have any follow up questions or queries, or just want to chat to me further about anything that I talk about in the next few minutes, so let's get into it. So, what am I going to be talking about in the next few minutes? To set the context, I'm going to be talking about what is product management, product management skills, variation in product management rules, uh, and then I'm going to try to answer some frequently asked questions. Uh, so, before I get into what is product management, uh, let me put a disclaimer here. This webinar is designed for aspiring and new product managers, and uh, anything shown is for illustrative purposes to convey the bigger picture, the bigger story. Uh, this is not an exhaustive or ultimate guide to product management. Uh, rather, this is how I think of product management, and I uh, think in the last five years of my product management career. Uh, this framing has been useful to me, and I'm sharing this uh, for the benefit of any new and aspiring product managers. So, let's get into it. Generally speaking, I'm going to paint a picture which a lot of you might be aware of or resonate with a lot. Uh, product managers do not really code. Product managers do not really design. Product managers do not always write SQL to analyze data. Product managers do not really make engineering capacity plans. Uh, product managers are not focused on marketing or sales alone. Uh, product managers do not always QA their launches or products or features. Uh, product managers do not make pretty slides like consultants. Then what do product managers really do? What is product management really? If I had a dollar for every time somebody has asked me this question, uh, I'll probably be Elon Musk. But jokes aside, uh, this is a very confusing question for anybody who has not worked in product management. This is something which makes them go, "Hey, what do product managers really do? How do I?" Even understand the job before getting into it. Uh, so this next few minutes is going to be trying to understand what is product management really. If it is not coding, not designing, not queuing, what is it? So product management is about defining a product and ensuring its success. Uh, PMs do. A lot of things and require many different skills. So before I move on to the next one, I'm just gonna keep this here for a bit. So this is a little oversimplification. Product management is about defining the product and ensuring its success. And uh, PMs do a lot of things like any other person would do, and they require many different skills. So this is a lot of generalization. Uh, but bear with me as I clarify some more things here. And there's more. PM role varies a lot. Knowing these things that you need to do as a PM and acquiring these skills is required, but not sufficient information to join or aspire to join any company as a product manager. So I know that you're feeling like this. Mm, okay. This like it's evident, right? And isn't it oversimplification? Possibly. So let's get into the details. As I said, PM do many things. 
which may require different skills but what are these many skills that many things that pns do and uh, what do they typically do what do what do, does their day look like on a daily level so before arriving at a project or a particular feature pms typically do a lot of customer research competitor research uh pms try to understand the customers they're very close to the customers go on customer interviews understand their pain points uh they consolidate feedback from multiple channels and uh, they try to see if Uh, these customers and their pain points are solved by some other company some other competitor how is it being solved what makes sense for them to do what does it make sense for them to do where do they create differentiation in their product where do they say that we need to absolutely meet this particular industry standard so pm work is a lot of customer and competitor research uh PMs also use data and form insights about their product based on data. Uh, this is also taken as an input to uncover many product opportunities or uh, for the research about certain areas of the products or pain points. So uh, analytics is a very cool part to PM in as well. Uh, PMs. also align with company and overall product strategy to prioritize the problems to be solved in the road map uh they do product road mapping which means that they ensure that out of all these problems that they know which problems are to be prioritized and uh, to ensure business and customer success so they do product strategy and road mapping after they have taken inputs from customer research competitors analytics business every other stakeholder uh so once they have done the road mapping they know that hey this is how next 3 months 6 months a year of my products going to look like this is what i'm going to be focusing on at this time this is how it's going to evolve the product so after they have done the road map uh pms typically let's say for a particular feature or a project or problem statement that they want to work on uh pms typically define the problem what exactly is the customer facing uh back it by data customer research uh, in interviews uh, competitor research and all the good stuff and then pms uh, get into the details about what exactly the scope is going to look like for that particular feature what is the minimal scope or the minimum viable products uh to ensure that something is out there to get feedback faster and to iterate over their products uh pming is not about launching uh, perfect products because there's nothing like perfect product uh it's about launching minimal things to get feedback fast was that useful was it not useful if useful what next what else can help so all of these uh fall under the bucket of pm uh then ultimately every pm's job is to ensure that team is shipping the right things uh and a lot of people define product management uh, as uh, getting things done so pm's responsibility it is pm who's accountable for uh like getting things out there to their customers which are valuable and useful to them uh, so pms leave no stone unturned to get things done so that they can ship uh pms deliver and measure outcomes so pms ensure that the products that they are working on is marketed effectively the things that they're launching uh has expected outcomes that they predicted and if not then what is the reason what can be changed to uh, uncover more opportunities there in case that a product has not been adopted then trying to find the root cause of it uh, it has not been able to achieve certain outcomes and finding uh, what why exactly has the product not uh, 
performed as expected and then iterating learning from it and then uh making more changes iterating on the product and similar life cycle of uh, doing all the research and figuring out using data so this is what typically pms do and none of this is in silo so pms work with designers uh, data scientists analytics data research a lot of different people within the company to ensure that all of these things are smooth and working they take inputs to a lot of things they give their feedback to a lot of different departments and streams so it's a lot of communication uh so to answer our first question product managers do not really code but interact with engineers and coders on frequent basis to ensure the team is building the right products and they're building it right product managers do not really design but they interact with designer on a frequent basis to ensure that product designs are solving for the most important customer pain points they bring the customers uh, viewpoint ahead and pain point ahead they have a lot of empathy uh, product managers do not write sql exactly to analyze data uh, but interact with data scientists or analysts on a frequent basis to ensure that correct use of data is data is being used correctly to drive the business and product success and to drive the team towards the goal that uh, they have product managers do not really make engineering capacity plans but product managers interact with engineering managers to ensure that the right things are prioritized and scope to maximize the impact with whatever limited capacity is there in terms of engineering and the specific skill set that the team has so what is the maximum impact that they can create as a team product managers are not focused on marketing and sales alone but product managers interact with pmm if there are pmm in the company and sales if this of sales team exists to ensure that the products tell the story that actually maximizes the adoption and uh, maximizes the outcome that they are trying to achieve and are able to be sold or to be monetized product managers do not always qa their launches or whatever they're releasing but ensures that product quality is good for their customers to be used this can mean a lot of different things for different companies and different product managers but it's the responsibility of product manager to ensure that they're launching the correct and good quality product uh product managers do not make pretty slides like consultants oh well <laughs> all right so product management managers do a lot of different things as we just saw and may require many different skills so thing that you see right now is a tweet by shreyas toshi if you don't follow him please give him a follow he shares amazing knowledge about product on twitter and uh, these are the major category of skills that any product manager needs to hone over time and develop over time and uh, this is so product managers should have a commercial sense they should know how business works they should know how finance and pricing works they should know what actually is selling from their product how to promote their product so product managers should have a commercial sense product manager generally develop product sense after a while they should have a lot of empathy they should get domain knowledge and they should use their creativity in their solutions and product thinking uh they need to have analytical sense which is uh driving data analysis and using logic to come to conclusions and product decision uh execution sense so this is basically uh where they mean that hey what is realistically possible how to get into detail how to get this executed what is stopping us how to make sure that it doesn't stop us from executing so this is around execution self sense uh product managers uh, 
think about product vision and strategy. So they need strategical thinking, uh, vision, storytelling, being able to communicate their vision. Uh, product management, as you go up the ladder of PMing, it becomes about PM management, where you try to mentor other PMs, you try to uh, meta execute things, you try to make frameworks around decision making career coaching so it's about pm management as well as you go up the ladder and become from an ic to a product manager manager and uh, product manager meant is also about influential communication so as i said none of the things that i mentioned before is in silo so product managers have to interact with a lot of people on a daily basis so a lot of stakeholder management a lot of collaboration a lot of communication a lot of listening writing speaking and uh, product managers uh, need to ensure that uh, the business is happy the team is happy everybody's happy and the customers of course are happy uh, product managers uh, need to think critically so they need to have common sense they need to have awareness and framework thinking they need to think about how to approach a problem so all of these skills combined honing all of these combined makes a product manager great so uh, this is a lot of skills we're going to talk about how do i get to these skills but uh, just a disclaimer here nobody no product manager is perfect in all of these skills some some people have uh, different uh, strengths and some weaknesses uh, they find opportunities to hone their skills so this is a very exhaustive list of product management skills and nobody's perfect but this is what you need to hone over time if you want to grow in your product management career so i'm going to move on to the next one but that's not all that's a lot but that's not all so ideally you would think that all pms do all things like what we mentioned customer research competitor research and all the things that we mentioned before uh and possess all the skills that we talked about like product sense analytical sense execution sense so ideally you would think that should that's how it works but practically or in real scenarios pm role depends a lot it varies a lot so depending on some things pm can be doing a lot more of let's say customer research or analytics and uh, depending on certain things they might need to have communication more than other skills or execution more than other skills so practically a pm does not like always do everything at all times and have all the skills uh, they are sometimes required to be doing certain things more and uh, possess certain skills more than other skills so let's ah uh, so what does a pm role actually depend on the like so far we have talked about a very broad generalization and things like that but the devil actually lies in the tiny tiny details of product management uh because it's not a very tangible thing you don't have a clear winner always in product management it's more like a decision making and aligning everybody so uh what exactly is pm role is in the details and the devil of the answer lies in the detail so i'm going to get into some details about what are these factors which make the pm role vary or what does the pm role change from one pm to another upon what are these things uh and why why do i talk about like this variation in pm roles and uh, why do i talk about um, like why am i reiterating the point that day to day product manager role varies a lot depending on certain things because knowing what is product management and the skills it takes is required for you as a new or aspiring pm uh, but it is not sufficient information for you to understand which company to join or which role to take on or uh, how do you make your next career move uh, 
and should you be become a pm and if you should then which company which product which particular pm role should you take up so let's get into the factors which actually influences the real daily day to day pm role uh business model so for a business or the company is it a b2b model it is a b2c model and in general overall like what is the business model for the company that you're going to be working with what is the industry of the company that you're going to be working with is it fintech is it tech is it so social media what is the industry that you're looking for to join company size so are you looking forward to join a startup mid size company or a large company as a product manager things differ a lot in the pm world for a pm with a small company and a large company uh product size so the product that you will be managing or working on is it going to be used by 100 people or 100000 people and it's different from company size for a reason because there are smaller or niche product within big companies like google and uh, there are big products within small companies okay, i'm not sure of that but anyway the point is uh, it can be a product with huge usage or traffic or it can be a product with a niche market or a niche usage what stage of the product is in is this product at their start phase a growth phase and end phase and again this is very different from product size and company because of the fact that uh, google can own a lot of end stage products and they might actually close them like or could way back or google can have very small products like google bolo maybe or something like that so basically a big company can have different products at different stages in their life cycle some may be in their nascent initial stage some may be in their growth phase and then some may be more mature like google search so uh, what is the product stage that you are thinking to manage product team and not product team sorry team composition and size so how big is going to uh, how big is your team going to be and does the team have a pmm does the team have a designer does the team have a dedicated uh, in like mobile engineer so all of these things matter a lot, lot while choosing a product manager role who is the customer so which region and it might not sound very obvious but a lot of times pm roles vary a lot because of different pain points faced by certain geography certain demographics so who is the customer uh, let's say which region do they belong to or uh, how do they behave do they belong to certain demographics is it focused on certain particular groups of people or is it more wider and global product than that so all of these factor changes the product manager role on daily basis i'll give you some instances to help you understand what i mean by this uh a pm with a b2c company may run more large scale experiments than a pm with b2b company so b2c generally end up having more number of users as compared to uh, b2b so on an average so all of these are statistically speaking instances like random instances to get you an idea uh but yeah so b2c company product manager may actually lo- lo- run large scale experiments and run ab tests than b2b company uh, it makes sense for them to and uh, they might but b2b pms might actually be closer to sales department and people who are selling the product than a pm at a b2c company because generally it's sell selling sometimes so a lot of pm role changes depending on this uh pm in a social media industry may be more focused on increasing the daily active users monthly active users engagement or retention while a pm in e-commerce industry 
may consider sales or revenue as an odd star or conversion if they're working on certain part of the product. A PM in FinTech actually may work more closer with legal and compliances team department than a PM with the, let's say, EdTech. They might work closely with teachers, educators, students, and a lot of different people over there. Uh, PM with a big company may need to communicate more, influence more, get more alignment from a lot of different stakeholders, may need stakeholder management much more uh, than a PM uh, with a startup. But a PM with a startup may need to wear multiple hats. They might have to do QA. They might to have uh, put the data on their own. They might have to write SQLs on their SQL queries on their own. So PM role depends a lot here. And then PM working with a new product may need to do more research about the market and take more riskier bets than PM working with an already established product. So for new product, you may not have a lot of data, not, not a lot of knowledge already. Uh, you're still like uh, figuring out the customers. Uh, so you may have to take riskier beds uh, and research much, much more than PM working on already already established product and already a mature product where there's a lot of data, there's a lot of behavior patterns, a lot of interviews, a lot of UX research, a lot of research already done in the past. A PM with fully functional autonomous team, which has multiple different people with different skills, may not, you know, need to QA their products because maybe they have like a person who QAs or uh, uh, I'm just oversimplifying, but uh, like PM has to wear whatever hats that need to be worn to launch the product. So a PM which doesn't have like a UX researcher or UX designers might need to wireframe a lot on their own and think about the science much more than a PM who has a designer in their team. So, and on the last point about customers and who the customers are, PMs working on certain demographics or certain geographies may deal with certain problems which are very specific to that particular demographic or geography uh, and it might depend on the cultural and behavior nuances of that particular demography and like they might have to deal with specific problems that other PMs don't face working on global products but there are different issues around legal and compliances when you work on global products so a lot of this sums up the original point that uh, PM rule changes a lot depending on the context. So did, what is the real answer to what is product management? And I would say it all depends. It depends on the context. Product management, though there are certain overall highlights and themes around product management that we discussed that things people do in as a product manager and there are an overall level of skills that you will hone over time which is uh, communication product science and a lot of those skills so there are an overall things about product management but when you get into the daily activities of product manager or how you will feel over time the real answer is it depends on the context and what company, what product, what customers, what market are you solving for? So this is the real answer. It all depends on the context. Okay, I'm gonna take a brief pause here. And this was about product management. Overall, what do you need to do as a product manager? What skills you need to per uh, possess to become a good product manager and then how the PM role varies a lot on different factors and how it influences you as a PM. Moving on to frequently asked questions. Seems like a lot of skills to become a PM. How do I acquire some of these skills or become better at some of these skills? So I know that skill chart was very huge and large. And to be honest, I 
I'm developing a lot of those skills and don't feel that I'm up to mark on, on, on a lot of skills. So first thing is acknowledge that nobody's perfect. You will have some skills better honed and then others require more attention and developing. So you need to identify the ones that you're good at, the ones you need to improve. And uh, once you have identified this, you need a plan to improve certain skills. You need to prioritize the skills that you need to improve. And uh, how do I generally improve my skills is by pushing myself in uncomfortable opportunities. So take up opportunities, be uncomfortable a little bit, but get feedback, do those things, get feedback and improve on those skills. Like, for example, don't think your influential communication is up to mark and you get nervous while speaking. Speak in a webinar. You don't think you have product sense or you think like you lack prior experience to have domain knowledge. So take up an opportunity which interests you and work with someone who does and you can learn from them that a lot of things you pick as you grow in your product management career from people around you. Uh, personally, I think the only way to learn product management or to develop those skills is by doing product management and to actually doing those things. So there's no escape or a second tour to success in a product management career. You need to do those things to become better at them. Let's move on to the next one. I have experience uh, working as a XYZ for this many years. I am looking to move to a PM role. Do companies hire people like me for PM role? And can I find success in this role? Again, it depends. You can probably answer this yourself if you dig a little deeper and get more specific. Like we said, PM role varies a lot. So different companies have different requirements uh, for different PMs. They Some of them may need like a new person with more curiosity and common sense than somebody uh, who, because they might not need to do PM management, let's say, or communication that much, let's say. So it varies a lot. Different companies hire different people depending on who they require at what stage in their life. And uh, if you think you have certain skills that PM role needs uh, because of your previous experience or in general, then the answer is yes, you are as good as anybody else to move into product management. Do you think you can develop other important skills needed in the PM role? Like, let's say if you don't have certain skills like product sense, uh, is there a way for you to develop it and hone your skill to get PM roles? If so, if the answer is yes to both of these questions, then find the right companies who would be open to hire you and uh, go through the process uh, improve your interview skills, be ready to tell why do you think you can be a good PM and uh, what are your strengths and what are your weaknesses, growth opportunities, how do you see yourself in what excites you about PM world and just be honest and open. Uh, finding success in this role is totally up to you and how you define your personal success. And the same answer applies to freshers looking for PM roles. So find the right opportunities. PM. Uh, there are companies who hire for freshers, APM or PM rotational programs and find the right opportunities and uh, what do they require and apply. Don't let the rejection deter you from applying. Take it as a learning experience, improve your interview skills and keep applying. Rejection is a part of life is an integral part of life and also the product management process. So we'll move on to this one. And uh, how do I prepare for PM interviews? I think this is a very common question. You'll find a lot of answers on the internet. And uh, uh, what I'm going to do is leave you with certain resources, which might be helpful to you. Uh, there are tons of material on the inter internet. What you need to do is actually develop your PM skills, understand how best to tell your story, uh, 
take the interview as a two way street to understand what is expected from that role in the particular companies as we talked about pm role varies a lot and you need to know what you're getting into before you actually get into it so just read up about it prepare yourself look at books youtube channels join the communities follow amazing product people and find other resources on the internet there are a lot of links and resources on the internet for to prepare for pm interviews i would specially call out the product school community and uh, since this is a platform i'm taking from product school to uh, do this webinar so uh, product school is a great 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 initiative to encourage people to get into product management and to help them understand how to and uh, if it is fit for them so with that i would wrap it up uh thank you so much for listening in i'll try to summarize things just very 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 clear very very briefly we talked about what is product management product managers need to do a lot of different things like computer research analytics a lot of different things and they need a lot of different skills like communication product sense and a lot of different other skills uh pm role varies a lot depending on factors like company in the company uh customer that they're targeting and the product really the product area that you're going to be working on and uh, then we talked about general questions like can somebody get into product management how do i in how do i improve my skills how do i prepare for interviews and the answers like i don't think anybody can give you the right answers to those because there are no right answers it is you who can actually decide what works for you what are the skills that you need honing what kind of resources work for you it can be a book or it can be a youtuber it can be a community driven career approach so you decide what works for you if you want to get into product management you find the correct opportunities that will take that will be like fit for you in your career at that time and uh, the answers lies within uh so thank you so much for listening in and if any of you amazing people want to join an amazing mission at intercom have a look at intercom careers uh, we are growing and would love to hear from you uh to get in touch with me or to ask any other questions you have or uh give me any feedback follow up on this talk you can visit my website imshilpi.com you can send me a dm on twitter actually or you can shoot me a mail so it would help me a lot to know to hear back from viewers of this particular webinar uh it would be very helpful for me to understand if this was useful or not for you and what stage are you in in your career and what could have been put in or answered in this webinar to make it more useful so feedback is the oxygen for growth for not just products but for people as well so i would love to hear from all of you lovely people tell me if this went good and this was useful for you or tell me is this sucked and this already told you the things that you knew or you know any other feedback about how this could have gone better so thanks for listening in i'll tune out bye